Hello everyone. This is YouTube number two in August and today I'm going to paint some Japanese anemones. I usually rely heavily on these flowers um, for classes at this time of year but unfortunately this year they're not looking nearly so good as usual. Um, I guess it's the hot weather. Um, they're very small and fairly deformed, a lot of them. Um, so I'm just going to wing it a little bit with them. I've got as many in as I feel I need, but they're just really not looking that great. Um, so to get around this, I'm going to paint them quite loosely and without drawing. Um, I feel this technique suits this time of year perfectly, so it should be okay and this way I will not have to concentrate on details and accuracy so much. So I'm actually just going to paint, paint, paint and pop in some background as I go along and see how it goes. Um, so let me just turn this down, let's go on land again. Right, so I've got here um, a little dish of uh, permanent rose, um, quinacridone magenta and some cobalt blue and I'm actually going to let it sort of meet in the centre here and create different tones for me which I think you know sometimes I'll put a bit more blue in sometimes I'll put a little bit more pink in but they are quite varied in in tone so any of those colours would, would work very well. Or if you haven't got permanent rose, I think rose madder would be okay too. And um, I've got my normal sort of summery green here for the little little centre. And I'm not going to, to um, worry at all about my colours mingling. I'm just going to let it happen. I've got a nice square pad out, so hopefully I'll end up with a reasonably nice shape. I've got um, cad free yellow out for the for the little stamens which I'm going to just pop around the edges not minding that my green is mingling with that a little bit which is quite nice. I've got quite a big brush out so I'm indicating there a few little stamens by pulling some green out. This is an eight sable blend. I'm tending to use these sable blends, um, trying to use these sable blends rather than the Kalinsky sable all the time because actually I think a lot of you have this particular um, brush because it is actually quite a bit cheaper and, and art materials are going up so much at the moment in price that I'm trying to sort of counteract that by using different brushes because they can be really quite expensive. So that's really very wet and I'm going to paint next to it with my next flower. Just using the wet on wet technique and sort of concentrating a lot of colour onto this one because it's going to be in a sort of focal area here. I don't think I've got two of these flowers here um, looking the same. They're just so strange this year. They're, they've got, um, some of them have got, I don't know, I haven't even counted, but look like a dozen petals. Some of them only got four or five. So it's not, not looking good really. But I do love them. I think they're lovely flowers. So I've got to paint them. So I've got some smalt out as well, which is a sort of, grey, a, a, a blue that has a sort of grey tinge to it. It's a pretty, pretty blue, which I don't tend to use as a mixing colour, but one I, I do use for backgrounds and so on. 
So I'm actually popping a bit of that down as I go along, just to allow some of my flour to bleed into it. And I, I can keep control because I'm only touching it where I want to touch it. I don't know how far I'll get, whether I'll manage to do a whole picture, but I'm just going to see how it goes. Leaving white paper. They tend to have a little bit more color where they leave the stamens. Sitting on its side a little bit, this one. You can see by that one it's got lots of petals, but some of them have got even more than that. So if you if you have these and you, you decide to paint them, you can leave some of the petals out or in fact just pull a few off. You don't have to, if it, if it gets too complicated, you don't have to actually paint everything you see and so therefore leave a few of those petals off. Nice that they actually are varying tones though, because that really makes for a lovely, interesting little flower. Right, touch as little as possible. So, letting some of this actually touch this side. So, if you paint this way, you kind of let your picture grow as, as it goes along. And just see what happens but I would suggest not if you're a beginner not not um, painting to trying to fill too much space um, start with a smaller painting because actually if you keep going keep going in this way and you're not used to it it can end up looking a little bit weak so let's pop another one in here Putting two together always makes for a nice focal area. So I'm going to have one sitting behind another here. Give this a little bit more depth here. So I, I tend to start with the petal that I can see the whole of and then paint consecutive petals as I go round. That petal is sitting behind this flower. So it's only a part of the petal there. That smoke really is a lovely colour. This one hasn't actually got very many stamens left on it, but I'll just pop a few round one side. They've fallen off, but it's good that they're all looking different, one from the other really, because that helps you to get variation without having to think too much about it. But work in the direction that you see the direction, the, the markings, the direction that the markings are making on the 
page. No reason why you shouldn't drop another little colour in there, really. A bit of yellow on there will just indicate maybe a bit of green or something else going on, just to add some interest. I really am not following what I've got in front of me. I'm just using those flowers for inspiration and I'm making up my composition as I go along, which is a lovely free way to paint and much easier than you think it's going to be. So hope you try. It's quite wet so the paint will keep on moving and moving and making its own way. Which always ends up looking good if you don't touch it too much. Different shapes. This brush has a good point, so it does help me to get in to little areas like that nicely. Right. This is such nice, uh, such a nice technique and, and, and fun to do, but you do have to relax when you're painting this way and try not to sort of force it too much. Allow, allow the, the paint some freedom and wait and see what you've got when it's dry. It's always very fresh looking when you paint straight onto the paper without drawing first because you're only looking at the subject the one time and also you haven't got these hard lines to worry about and you're not following anything other than what's going on in your head and what's in front of you to an extent. Much less contrived than if you draw. I really love it. But I do realise it's not for everyone. Not everyone likes to paint this way. Okay. Um, I think I'll paint one more flower and then I'll start putting in a few little buds and things. So have I got one that's looking down a bit? Yeah, that one. Just bend it over a bit more. You can make the flowers do what you want them to, to an extent, just to give you an idea. Of... But I just thought that might look quite nice if, if it's looking down. A few more stamens on this one. Pop a few more back on there as well. So if you've got little areas on your petals that curl back, just treat it as a separate section and you'll indicate quite easily then what, what it's doing. Any really sort of wide 
white areas that you might leave that you feel are too much, you can go back to afterwards and fill them in a bit. As long as you're ending up with nice shapes that you haven't touched too much, it's all going to look lovely. That magenta on the top of this mix that I've got really does make for a nice dark pretty centre there. I'm going to pop a little bit of background in here. Which can be darkened and changed a bit later if I feel I need to. But that little area there in the center can benefit from being quite a bit deeper in color. So just dropped a bit more in there. So I'm really not pushing it around too much at all. I'm just letting it be. And if you make the initial shape a good one, you won't have to keep on going back at it. a petal that just doesn't look right because it's malformed or just hasn't isn't going to indicate a nice shape in your composition then make it look better for instance that one stop there it, it just didn't finish developing so I've just made it a better shape And this is what I think we're going to find in the garden from, um, for a while until we get some decent rain. So I think this sort of way of painting is going to be quite good for now. Right, so let's pop a bit more background going on. Don't know that I'm going to worry too much about stalks. I'll certainly put some of those pretty buds in there, which can be painted over the top of my background if I want to. It's nice just to let that edge go away so that it's quite light. You can always go back onto the background afterwards and make negative shapes and different shapes to create more interest in your picture when you're painting this way, but keep it simple to start with. Keep an eye on areas that are still wet and pop a bit more on if you feel you need to, but don't touch too much. You 
can wet your background area first if you find it easier and then the paint will just run in that wetted area. I'm tending not to do that so much when I'm demonstrating because it means touching it twice and taking more time. It's nice to paint this way without having to hurry too much. So, and there's no reason why if you reach this point, you, you can walk away and have a coffee or something and come back and see what else you feel you'd like to do after it's dried or you've gone away and come back and it will look different. Right, I just want to put in a few nice little buds. Which tend to be a bit green at the base. They have more magenta in than the pink, and they're little sectioned things. You can see each little section of it. Nice bluey green stalks. Use the point of your brush for little tiny areas like that. Pop another one in. try to vary all the time one thing from the next so that they don't all look the same because they're not and just leave there's actually some leaf here so I'm just loosely indicating some leaf there's somebody with a chainsaw out there I don't know if you can hear it that's not restful a little bit of leaf there Right, what else have we got that we need to put in? Um, I think I'll put another bud in so that I've at least got three before I have to go away. The backs of these are also beautiful, so you can always think about putting the back of a, one of these flowers in. Putting a bigger one here. I haven't actually got one of those, but I, I kind of remember that's what they do. Right. So I really should put some larger leaves in, maybe around the edges. I don't know if I want to though. I think I'm just going to carry on with some background at the moment. Making some shapes into the background. And you never really ever do have to put leaves and stalks in if you don't want to. You can actually just concentrate on the flowers because actually these leaves are really quite big and bold and so on this particular one I don't know if I want to do anything like that 
I'm just sort of indicating a few more petals behind here, as if there are more flowers sitting behind, mingling in with the background. So that when, when that background paint is dry, you can actually do this. You can paint over the top, painting negatively and getting some other lovely shapes going on into the background, or even when it's wet like there. Try to end up with a with a nice shape, overall shape. And the background helps with that, keeping that outer edge nice and free. I think we could do with another bud here. They have lots and lots of buds, which I. Oh, that's why I was really quite loath to to pick these because some of the buds were actually going to come out and hopefully look a bit better than these. Some little ones sitting beside it, all on the same stalk. And some leaf. Actually, bring some of that leaf through here, which will look okay, I think. Give it some nice depth through the centre there. So, this is what I mean about letting a picture grow as you go along. Don't mind the tiny leaves, it's the big ones I find are a little bit overpowering. Right. Um, so I think possibly you get the idea. I can put a few stalks in if I want to. Maybe that's what it needed. So you have to know when to stop. Just letting that bleed a bit there. So it's slightly experimental, but it will still dry up fine. And that's really what I wanted to show today. So you can sit out in the garden maybe and just paint a little patch of something easily and freely like this and see what you end up with.
maybe a bit more leaf just coming through here perhaps So much fun. I don't really want to stop, but I think I have to. And as I said, if you keep on going and going, it isn't necessarily a good idea because it will just get a bit silly and a bit weak, maybe. But these little darks that I'm putting in now are really going to be helpful at the very end of my painting, just to create some depth and make the lights look lighter and give my picture a little bit of strength. So I think that's, that's all I'm going to do. I think you've got the idea if you don't, if you've kind of created a shape that you don't particularly like, I don't really like that bit out there. So I'm actually just, with my sponge, getting a little bit of my sponge and just wetting it away a little bit and just changing it a little bit of that side. Make sure your sponge is clean though. There. I don't dislike it. I think it's all right. And so, I've thoroughly enjoyed doing it, and I hope you you will too. But as I said, if you don't have um, these particular flowers, maybe go for something else. Um, this is a bit more structured, but I did actually paint it without drawing, and I, I didn't put a background on it because I, but these are around at the moment, and they are quite, quite nice to paint and I did it without drawing but I think to pop a background on there as you go along would be quite quite difficult because you you may not then end up with the nice shape that these particular flowers actually create um, but if you wanted a background and you want to paint an agapanthus then maybe think about putting a background down first as I did there allowing it to dry and then painting on the top, okay? So that's another flower that you may have if you don't have these. Um, if, if you're used to painting this way and you want to create something a bit more involved, then just keep going and you'll maybe end up with something like that. Um, I put different colors into the background on that one and painted negatively. Um, some more flowers in the background and so on let some of it go but you know just keep going if you if you feel that you've got you know um, the confidence to do that but if you haven't done this before I would definitely try and keep it um, a little bit smaller a little bit less involved um, I have a little bit of disappointing news to impart the fact is Oriolin, which I use in my greens, has been discontinued um, and I've researched it and discovered the reason is that apparently it turns brown, something I've never noticed, but actually looking back on um, a watercolour chart that I have, it had actually turned brown. Um, and apparently it even happens in powder form at the point of production. So it's very surprising that um, they've taken so long to discover this because it's been produced ever since the 1800s. And the testing should have been discovered before, really, because it could really make a difference to a lot of people's paintings. Um, anyway, I'm going to stop using it. 
and um, I've discovered that Windsor Newton Artist Quality Windsor Yellow is the nearest. And so I've ordered lots of it and I'll be using that in my greens in future. So if you have Oriolin, I don't think you'll get hold of any more anyway, but I wouldn't advise it because I did wonder whether I'd try and get a lot on Amazon or something, but if it's going to turn brown, we don't want it anyway. So switching to, to Windsor Yellow, um, which is bad news. It's a, it's a lovely yellow, <laughs> never mind. Um, the other one isn't too different. Um, so I hope you enjoy your painting this week and I hope you'll be nice and free and um, gentle with it in the way that I have been today. I thoroughly enjoyed doing that. Um, touch as little as possible and allow your paint lots of lovely um, freedom and paint loosely and see what you get. Allow it to dry before you judge. Um, the next video will be on the 1st of September and I'll be painting a white flower or flowers um, using a similar technique as today. Okay, I'm not going to touch this anymore. I'm going to leave it just like that. And so don't be tempted to, to, to keep going back at, at a painting like this. It is what it is and it's finished. Okay, take care. Have a lovely week painting. Bye.